this video we're going to build spectrum analyzer. So we have the receiver uh, based on an RF24 module and we have the graphical display based on OLED module. So what happens, it has the given bandwidth defined by this, the, the, by this receiver, an RF24, uh, placed around 2.4 GHz and we have uh, it listening to the RF band in this, in this range. So, for instance, if we switch the cell phone on, we're going to see that uh, we have information present in the area. So, we see that signal is rising. Well, okay, so this device that you're going to build this in this video. Okay, now the phone is off and the signal is off as well. We have soldered the wires. Here's the circuit diagram, uh, how to connect my Adreno Pro Mini to the external modules. In my case, uh, this is uh, OLED display and uh, another F24 modules. So, uh, for the OLED display, it's pretty simple. You have just I2C interface so those two pins, and you look at the ITC interface on the board. Uh, so in my case, I have those two pins. So if you have some kind of different board, you have to make sure that uh, you connect to the right pins. So what you do, you open the chip data sheet, and you look at the pin names, and then you see how those pins are connected on the board. Uh, you can do it very simply with your multimeter. Uh, and uh, after you find the pins connected exactly to where it has to be connected. So I have this diagram, so I know that those two pins are I2C interface pins. And then you have uh, power for this module. For this case, I have to use 5 volts, so I'm using a Vero, 5 volts or more, and uh, the ground. So next module is an RF24 module. So I have to, once again, I have to connect uh, interface. In my case, this is SPI interface. Again, we look at the board, and we know that SPI interface are, are those three pins. So we connect it first. Next, you have two uh, digital pins, which has to be connected. Uh, you, you can use any of those pins, so those digital pins you can use any of those two. And uh, the power, you have to use the power. So it, it, for the case of FNRF 34 modules, you have to be very careful with the power and it should not exceed 3.6 volts so I can use 3.3 volts from the VCC on the board so this is the pin uh, I drop on the board let's say 5 volts and then the board using the stabilizer to diminish this voltage to 3.3 volts and then I can use it stabilized voltage for this module um, if uh, you have a powerful NRF module with a power amplifier, then you have to use external. Good idea is to use external external power to make sure that you will not burn the, the ship. Okay, so this is the diagram, and then we connect it in the physical world. So what I have, I have uh, my OLED display, I have an RF module, I have my Adreno Pro Mini chip, which is connected to the UART interface chip. Well, that's pretty simple. Okay, my OLED module is connected. All is good. I can display 21 character on the horizontal line, and I can have four lines on the vertical line. I have also this module, twice the capacity. I can display uh, eight lines of code on that one. But as we can see, it's, uh, it's quite clear and readable. I also have the last line. It shows the time needed to display this information by Drina. And in this case, I have uh, 9000 microseconds or 9 milliseconds. Well, it's a bit slow, but anyways, still, still can be used for some purposes. Well, slow in the sense that uh, if we're using uh, PPM protocol, for radio transmitter, I have only uh, nine microsecond. I have only maybe ten microseconds to do all the code uh, that I want. So PPM is not good for the this type of module. If I want to use it for the 
and laundry. I need to find a way to have more process processing time for this device. But if I'm using not a BPM but a digital protocol, so I'm going to have enough time. And if I surprise, I cannot use this module with NRF24 because the Adreno Pro Mini does not have sufficiently uh, sufficient resources to uh, control both two modules. It actually takes all the RAM from the board and so on. So, uh, but I found solution. I found a different uh, library to control this module. So this module is based on the chip uh, SSD 1306. So uh, those two modules are actually have the same chip inside, but the different uh, number of pixels on the vertical line, 32 and 64. So I have this chip, and to be able to use uh, displays with this chip, you have you, you may use uh, two different types of libraries. So initially I was using Adafruit library, which is fail, not uh, sufficient resources on my chip, uh, Gino Premini is left, with this library. And I found the second option. So this is library which is worked just fine. So it has very little in comparison to that one uh, requirement for the chip resources. So if we install this library, which I already done, so I have uh, the chip working fine, and I can connect an RF, which is also working fine. And the, another good thing is that. Uh, the time required to update information on the screen is only 7 milliseconds. On the, with the previous library, other fruit, uh, you have to use 9 milliseconds. So less time is needed to update the display and the less resources is required from the ship. So the ship can work with those two modules now. Two modules, NRF24 and the display are working together. So what NRF24 does, it listens to the signals in the RF uh, band and then the information is displayed on the screen. So for instance, uh, let's see how it works. I have the cell phones, cell phone which work in the same range. So it's the same range, 2.4 GHz. It's a frequency band which is used for my, by many devices. RF keyboards, so Wi-Fi and so on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch the cell phone uh, and then try to communicate with the router on the Wi-Fi wi 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 band. So let's do it. And we pay attention here on this display. So let's go to see some news. Okay, now you can note that uh, the signal is present. Wi-Fi is operational. Let's click something else. And note the, the peak. Again, many peaks. So how it works? Uh, so we have the operational frequency 2.4 GHz, but it's not just a single narrow line, but it's rather the bandwidth of frequencies. So what NRF24 uh, does, it splits, splits this uh, band into 128 channels. So we have this band of frequencies, and it splits this band into 128 channels. So what we do, we listen to each channel subsequently, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And uh, let's say we are uh, at this moment uh, the, at the G, G channel. So this channel is going to stay for 128 microseconds. So at this number, because it's not too large, we have to have small number to have a good refresh rate. And it's not too small, so we can detect the signal. And then we'll listen. So the, the NRF24 is working as a receiver. So it's going to stay in this channel and I'm going to listen. Uh, and it's going to either detect the RF signal or not. So if it detects signal, we have one, or if it not, we have zero. So this number is uh, placed in the vector. So we have this uh, vector with 128 elements. So at this moment, we're going to move to the G element of this vector, and we're going to add number one if we have signal, or add number zero if we have zero. 
So that's why we're going to uh, have some. Okay, so so next we move to the next shell and and so on until we reach the last one. And once we reach the last shell, we're going to repeat the process once again, and we're going to do this for uh, 50 times in my case, because we found that. Uh, if we do it, uh, we have to have a sufficient number of times so that we're going to accumulate uh, a value on each uh, element of this vector. So if you do it just once, uh, this vector is going to consist from 0 or 1. If you do it twice, we might have number 2 in some, in some element and so on. So if you do it 50 times, uh, we expect to have some significant value on the elements of this vector. Okay, so uh, as the end result, we're going to have some distribution of signals on each of the band. How the devices are working, let's say the wireless, they, they work in a similar way. They have uh, some channels on this band, and then they're going to jump from one channel to another channel to make sure that there is no noise. So for instance, if there is noise for one channel, it's going to jump to the next channel, we're going to just need that. So it's going to jump in some particular range. So each channel, if each channel has some, some range as well, it's going to jump uh, on those uh, uh, sub-channels to uh, be able to transmit signal efficiently. So you kind of do it the same way, so we just observe the, the radio band on the various frequencies and then as a result we're going to have distribution. For instance, the cell phone, like in my case, it operates somewhere here. We have the peak there. So if we switch cell phone, Again, we have the wires present. So those are channels, so pro 1, 228. And at each channel, we're going to listen to the information. And at some channel, we're going to see a significant signal present. So meaning that the cell phone operates in this, in this range. Okay, it's self-explanatory. So what we do, we define the library that we're going to use first. So this is the graphical library and then those are libraries uh, for the NRF24 module. So next we define some global parameters. After that we have the setup section. Um, basically we just uh, said that we are not going to use uh, acknowledgement procedure, so meaning that NRF24 is just a receiver and not going to transmit any confirmation of the received signal. After that we have the main loop in which we uh, scan all the channels. So we scan the channel from I, I to 128. And during that, what we're going to do, we're going to set the channel. And then we're going to listen. So we have the receiver. And we listen for 128 microseconds. And after that, we stop listening. And uh, we put the value into our vector. So this is the vector with 128 parameters and uh, if the signal is present we're going to increase the value by one if not we're not going to do anything so after that we have the picture loop so it's a loop used for my OLED module which calls the function draw and the function basically look at the vector we have created element by element and I display the value of this vector as a vertical line is number of pixels proportional to the number of inside of this vector. So it's pretty simple. 